Belkin got in touch and decided to send me over their ultimate keyboard case for the iPad. Now it's a pre-production one they sent me over, which just means it's got a couple of little things that need to be finished before it's released to the public, but the box that it came in is definitely the finished article and very nice it is too. Now they call this the ultimate keyboard case because it's the top model in their range. It works with the iPad 2 or the iPad 3rd generation or 4th generation, basically everything apart from the first thicker iPad. Now, as I mentioned, the box is rather nice. It's got this kind of glossy front on it here. It's even got magnets that hold it closed. So it's a bit of a shame you're going to throw this away at some point. Inside here, lots of bits of information about it. For example, it's got a very long battery life. It's rechargeable, of course. Other features are that it's got a comfortable handheld mode, which is shown on the back of the box here, a sort of thing to direct the speaker sound, uh, true type keys, fabric relief, aluminium alloy base, lots of different things. I'll show you these later on in the video. The main thing that's clever about this one is this intelligent keyboard power that automatically shuts on and off when you need to use it. That's the thing that differentiates it from some other keyboards that I've used, and I'll show you that as well. So let's get it out of the box and see what you've got. Well, you've got the keyboard case and a lead, a USB lead. It's a USB A2 micro B lead, and you'll need that to charge it up. Now it does come with some kind of charge in the box, but it said charge it before you use it, so I did. You plug it in, orange light comes on on the side, and then when it's finished charging, that light will go off, and that means that it's ready to use for those thousands of hours that it mentioned in the spec. So let's get it open. It's magnetically closed, and we'll just open that up. In the lid here, there's a piece of card, or a couple of pieces of card. Those are the instructions and some warranty information. As you can see, there's not an awful lot on the instructions. Let's just see what you have to do. Well, first one is put the iPad in the case, charge it up, turn the keyboard on, sync up the Bluetooth, and you're away. But first off, let's just have a look around the case before we start putting the iPad in it so we can see it in a bit more detail. Well, as you can see here, it connects in the top in those magnetic slots in the middle. Look at the blue light that's flashing now. That means it's just turned on because I've put it in that position. When I take it out of that position, the light goes off. And that's the smart sensing thing. Turns it on when you put it in a keyboard position and turns it off when you don't. Now, the top is held with this kind of piece of fabric. It's hard at both ends, but floppy in the middle. That's to sort of make it into a hinge. It's got a kind of soft inside there. Feels a little bit like velvet. That's the keyboard itself, rather glossy and quite thin as well. On the bottom of that's an aluminium base. And this side is some sort of leather type material. Uh, the outside of that is a plastic shell. That's what the iPad's going to go in and holds it in a sort of rigid position there. And of course, it's got all the cutouts that you need for the various parts of the iPad. So let's slip the iPad in. It goes in at this end first, and then that end just clicks behind two little lugs on the bottom there. And that's it. It's in place. So you lift it up and you slide it into one of those three positions there. Just show you a cross section there of it and that's the different positions you can put it in those three there uh, that's the middle one and that's the bottom one it's just for personal preference i suppose to keep the reflections out of your eyes when you're typing right we'll sync it up so we go into the bluetooth settings hold down these two buttons to get the sync activated it pops up on the screen and then you tap it and then type in the password belkin and uh, then you're connected right let's show it up and running top left button there is the home button that means i can get into the pages application let's try typing away on it to see how it is well, of course, this is my first go on it, and I seem to be doing all right. So the keys must be spaced pretty accurately. And um, actually, I'm not doing too bad at all here. So the keys are really nice. They actually feel a lot like the keys on my first uh, MacBook. And the space bar is correct for a change. You get a lot of wobbly space bars on these, or ones that when you press one end, the other end sort of pops up and things. So space bars are quite an important thing to test on keyboards, I find. It's a good measure of quality. So the keyboard itself is very nice. Now it's got quite a few different features on here. We've got cursor keys at the bottom, which is something that's missing from the iPad on screen keyboard. And cursor keys, of course, are very handy when you're typing on a keyboard and making mistakes like this one, for example. So just sort of cursor back up there and stick an H in it and then down to the right. So cursors useful. Now the next thing on the left here is the button for Siri. What's the date? It's Thursday, the 4th of April, 2013. And then along the top row of the number keys here, you've got various other commands that can be activated by holding down the function key. So I'll just show you what those different ones do now. So you hold down the function key and press, for example, the, well, the top left one is home. The second one is search. 
And then the third one, if we press that one, brings up the keyboard, the on-screen keyboard, if you wanted to bring it up and get rid of it. And then we've got cut, copy and paste. So let's just try those out now. So just type something on the screen here. And then you can use the cursor keys to go back and select the word that you want to cut, for example, and press the function and the cut key and then function and paste key to put it back again and function and copy key to copy that and then you can paste that as well. So that all works fine. It's a lot easier than trying to do it by do it using the on-screen keyboard and selecting things with your finger and sort of dragging across. I find that's very irritating normally. Okay, so those all work fine. We'll move along that top row of keys now and get onto those media keys. It's rather obvious what those do. If you're used to using any kind of uh, media player, you've got, uh, you've got to play, skip back, skip forwards, you've got mute, and of course you've got the volume up and down as well. Quite useful, I suppose, to have those on the keyboard. It means you don't have to pop out of the application that you're in to be able to control the background music that you're listening to. Now the keyboard does have a couple of little rubber things at either end here. This is where the pre-production thing comes in because the ones at the back were a little bit ugly looking. But as you can see, it stops the screen from scratching. All the keyboard cutouts, all these sort of bits and pieces that you need to be able to access are there. I like that leather bit on the back. It stops it scratching a surface when you put it down on it. The aluminium on the top looks smart as well. Now that magnetic catch there is pretty strong actually. It won't pop open by accident. Uh, you actually have to sort of lever it with your finger by putting it in that gap there. One thing that I'm not entirely happy with is the way that the bag that holds it in the top here. You see, it's a little bit wobbly. I'd rather it had either a ridge all the way across and a magnet in the middle, or maybe a magnet at either side, because it does have the opportunity for the screen to pop out there. After all, the screen's quite heavy when you think about that resting down on that bottom bit. It's quite easy to sort of knock it forward. Now, the main feature of this keyboard that I like more than any other that I've used is this. Now, you can type on the keyboard and then you can put your iPad into a tablet mode like this and just sort of carry it around like this. Carry on typing, the on-screen keyboard will pop up. Notice I haven't switched the keyboard on or off or done any of that. It's sensed that the keyboard isn't going to be used, so it's switched it off now. And then when I put the uh, iPad back in the keyboard position, it automatically turns the keyboard back on. The on-screen keyboard vanishes and I can just carry on typing on the physical keyboard. And that's the thing that I really like about this. Now, as you can see, it's quite thin here. That sort of leather bit at the back holds it up. This bit on the right, this bit that's sticking out, that's the plastic that directs the sound towards the person facing the iPad rather than out the side, which is a nice feature. But overall, the thing that I like best about this is the fact that you can use it very quickly as a tablet mode, carry it around like that. It's not uncomfortable, but whenever you want, you can flip it up, sit down at a table and start using it as a proper keyboard. So to sum up then, this is definitely the best iPad keyboard case that I've tested. It's a great keyboard, but it's also a pretty nice case as well. Keeps the iPad nice and safe inside. Now, I went online to see what the current price was, and I was a little bit taken back because it's currently £100, which is pretty expensive. So you've really got to be the kind of person that does an awful lot of typing to make this worthwhile. But if that's you, then I definitely think you should have a good close look at this one. Anyway, for the moment, thanks for watching.